And um, that's a good segue, actually, to the first topic I want to raise, which is the impact of digital life and business uh, to what we design. Um, how has it changed uh, what and how we design? And how does it change our sense of craft when we can constantly uh, improve and iterate on design? Are we ever finished? Um, I don't know. Uh, we have a lot of representation here from digital businesses. I know that's something that you guys grapple with all the time. Um, sure. I mean, I think that we've, we've adopted a philosophy at Etsy, and I think it's probably um, important to it, the sort of integrity of this idea that it's not exclusively a design idea, but is sort of fully embraced by design. Um, so I mean, it's also embraced by engineering and you know other parts of other sort of disciplines in the company. And it's that the the product is more like a living, breathing organism, and in fact is never done. So we don't judge it by the same standards you would judge a sort of finished form, um, but more judge it like how you would uh, nurture a, a garden or some sort of like living, breathing organism. Um, and so if you sort of view it through that lens and judge it on those terms, then you can kind of, uh, I think, approach the challenges and opportunities of the medium in a more healthy, healthy way. Mm -hmm. I know that's something you think about all the time at Facebook. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's something that I was talking to a lot of the students yesterday about is, you know, the relationship to the finished object is pretty different across all the different design kind of fields. And I think that's a really interesting thing for people to think about. You know, with landscape architecture, it's obviously always evolving. These are living, organic things. Buildings actually evolve over time. Architecture is actually, I think, a really interesting analogy there where it's like, you know, we often, because of cultural changes in society or the needs of the people who are using a particular building, will change and morph uh, structure over time. I think software is that concept on steroids, right? You just, it's never done. I mean, okay, I'm sure Randy will appreciate this. I always call it some kind of, you know, socially acceptable form of insanity. You know, you just, <laughs> like, you can never finish. And, you know, there's something, I think, for people who work in digital thinking, oh, it would be nice to just be done with something. <laughs> um, and then you realize, you know, with the humility that comes with working in a space that's constantly evolving and changing is that, we don't we know we'll never get it perfectly right and so you have to enter the design space with that sense of you know humility towards the process the technology um, respect towards the people who are using the product who truly will kind of realize uh, its potential and possibility and then to evolve constantly evolve and iterate um, i think the thing that you have to be careful about um, culturally within organizations is to not allow that notion to be an excuse to do sloppy work. Because I think, you know, when you're creating something that's physical, it's gonna be manufactured and you know, you can't go back into people's closet and fix the hem on the dress <laughs> right <laughs> after the fact. But that is our relationship to it. We know we're gonna put it out there. We can always fix it and make it better. But I think you have to have a very strong culture of quality within an organization that's doing digital work that says, we kind of need to act like we can't go back and fix things at some level, even though we know we can. Um, it's, it's an interesting kind of benefit to working in this space, but you have to kind of be protective of, of that ability, if that makes sense. It's interesting to see how that's changed, though. Like, I remember, when I, I remember at 15, when I started as a graphic designer, I would do paste-ups and ruby lith and like the old school blue lines and print film, and then suddenly you had a thing that was done. Mm -hmm. um, now with digital and software, you could really evolve your product. I mean, even the pen that we were just looking at, right? That, that, that is a thing that functions the way it functions today, but with software and with changes, that pen, that object will evolve in terms of its purpose and its value. And so it, it, it's crazy to think of design as being a finished thing anymore because it's always going to change. And you have an opportunity to evolve a product within an ecosystem. So it's amazing, it's sort of interesting to watch how designers have to change their way of, of approaching solving those types of problems. Our joke has been, it'll be our finger eventually, right? Two years mm -hmm. from sure. now, we won't need this. Right, Just, yeah. Right. So. We see in product design that um, we have many different um, artist designers working for us, and we see that there's no trend towards more digital. So very often we'll still receive a sketch uh, so the initial idea is still very much in the head and then translated into some means. I mean, the best example is, uh, I'm going back a couple of years, but it was Philip Stark drawing the juicy salif, which is the, uh, the spider. 
he was eating uh, in a Sicilian restaurant and it was drawn on a napkin because there was an overconsumption, no, there was an overproduction of uh, oranges. So he was eating um, octopus and having the idea of the oranges and so that's how the octopus came to squeeze the orange. Oh, and we got it on a napkin. It was still greasy. <laughs> I mean, it was, that was in Alessi, it was fantastic. So still today, we get this kind of, not that it's extreme, but we still get the design as kind of translated in a sketch. It's more up to our engineers then to come up with digital solutions to it, digital representation of it. And I think for us also, the biggest is to, as Etsy for example, to how we bring it to market. So how we bring the experience to market where the whole digital helps much more right. through web store, through digital means like video. Uh, but it's really funny that the origin is still very much, we find, hand uh, and very few technology involved. I think it'll be really interesting as a, as a person who largely, we do a lot of the make the product, right, um, type of design. I think it'll be interesting to watch the design you know, field grapple with this notion of you know, frankly, how do you pull forward the equity of the brand, what, what the consumer has learned to experience on Uber, on Facebook, and what have you, and that becomes a, a part of what the brand's about, right? That's the brand's experience. Mm -hmm. And so to change it is actually to, you know, frankly ask the consumer to come along on a, on a new experience. And so as you introduce innovation, you know, a new innovation, how much of the historical aspect of the brand do you continue to bring forward so the consumer says, oh, that's still a product from Gillette. I know and understand it and trust it, mm -hmm. yet there's something new and provocative about it for me to you know, try the brand or think about that proposition differently. So I think, um, frankly, it's, it's more in the digital construct. The time is, is just condensed, right, with your ability to do it. Um, but uh, the principles, I think, will remain the same. I think it'll be fun to watch the industry grapple with this notion of branding from a design standpoint in the digital space and what are the elements that you retain from an experience standpoint and what are the things that you shift and move away from. So. Mm.